Hi, my name is Francois Nya, I'm 42 years old. I'm a sports agent and I'm a basketball analyst for TV channel Canal Plus. So obviously I started out, uh, you know, playing soccer like, you know, every, every other kid. Obviously uh, in, in our culture, soccer is the main sport. So I was uh, pretty good at soccer, um, pretty advanced. I was at the, what they call uh, INF, uh, Clairefontaine. You know, and I was in the soccer academy up until 12, 13 years old. So yeah, I was recruited by a lot of uh, pro pro teams. Um, you know, for their their centre de formation, what they call it. I had a little setback because I was actually growing up very fast at a, at an early age. I had a growth spurt very early, so I couldn't really play soccer for about a year, a whole season, which you know, kind of like put me down mentally, and I wasn't in a great mindset. Uh, and right at the same time, you know, the Dream Team, you know, took over. 92, you know, the Dream Team, Barcelona, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Clyde Drexler, all those guys were just selling me the dreams. It was just like, boom, came into my life like something special. Uh, you know, my older brother came back from the U.S. at the time. He brought me some big, you know, uh, real size posters of Michael Jordan. You know, everybody had the name in the back. You know, like the, the, the U.S. culture, the rap culture was really attached to basketball, which to me was a complete shock. And, and that's really what attracted me to play basketball. So I just, uh, as soon as I had the green light to, you know, go back to playing sports, I just stopped playing soccer suddenly just to switch to basketball. Because to me, it was just the, the thing. I fell in love with it. So I started my, my pro career over in France and in, in Europe. I played, you know, over in France, Switzerland, and Spain. But you know, in all transparency, my little regret is I should have, you know, stayed patiently for the old embassies to open back up and continue my education in the U.S. But it is what it is. It was a great experience for me. Um, I had a okay career, uh, not what I expected. So very quick, I started thinking about, you know, the next move, and um, I started coaching for a minute. I was, uh, I was an assistant coach at Stonebridge Prep in California uh, for a few years. We had a lot of great success. We were top 10, uh, top 10 in the country. I'm uh, originally from Cameroon, uh, which obviously is 50% uh, of me, but you know, in reality, it's, it's like 85% of myself. Even though I grew up in France uh, and have you know, obviously the, the European culture, I'm very, very attached to my roots and my, my Cameroonian uh, uh, roots and, and blood. Uh, I do a lot in Africa, a lot in Cameroon, and, uh, and I'm forever, uh, forever, forever Cameroonian. Um, you know, I went from, you know, Remy Barry to Jovan Onyange to Nobel Bungo Kolo, uh, Pooh Jeter, uh, Larry Drew II. Uh, I mean, Lumba Mute in the NBA, obviously, Roger Mute, Landry Noko. Uh, but I was involved with a lot of guys uh, that came to our platform. Obviously, Pascal Siakam came through, you know, our platform, you know, with the Mba Mute Foundation. You know, Nikola Vucevic is a kid that I coached. Wasn't really my client, but I've always been, you know, close to him. And the, the main event, if I can call him like that, obviously the biggest name that I got to represent is, uh, is Joel Embiid, who, uh, funny story, uh, was gonna go number one pick in the draft and uh, something probably nobody knows because it's a lot of uh, uh, emulation right now around uh, Wembenyama for you know being the projected number one pick in the draft represented by you know French agents but at the time it was a French agent that represented number one pick in the draft because if it wasn't for his broken foot you know 10 days before the, before the draft he was gonna go number one at Cleveland and he was gonna be represented by a French slash Cameroonian agent and only very few people know that. Well it's funny because uh, the way it happened was so random and unexpected. Um, obviously you, as you know I'm a, I'm a sports agent so I represent guys and one of my guys at the time was invited on the show on Canal Plus and um, he went to the set, did the show and they offered for him to come back the following week and do a uh, uh, call a game, you know, broadcast a game. Unfortunately, he had to cancel and reroute his uh, his journey to to leave the day before. So I had to cancel, 
And when I did that, I called them and I said, oh man, we kind of like, you know, in the mix now because, you know, we, we, we counted on him, so we don't have anybody to replace him. And they offered me to do it. They said, you want to do it? I said, sure, why not? So I did it one time, two, three, and then eventually they invited me on the show. And then I was happy with it, I guess. They said, well, you obviously you know your craft, you know what you're talking about. And, uh, you know, do you want to be part of it? And it's been seven years. Are oh, we going to have an uh, NBA a regular season game in Africa one day? Uh, I believe it's possible, yes. Uh, I'm thinking about Senegal, obviously for a location uh, uh, reason, which is, uh, they have a game in Paris. So Paris is six hours ahead of New York. I mean, the, the East Coast time. So if we go to Senegal, for example, depending on the season, the time in the season, it could be one hour or two hours uh, uh, behind Paris, which is four or five hours ahead of New York. So, you know, I know they have straight shots from New York to, uh, to the car. Um, so why not? I think it, it's, a, it's a possibility. The car is a great arena that they just opened uh, a few years back and they have the infra infrastructures and the uh, resources to, uh, to host it. So I think they're, they're well equipped. So why not in the car one day? Well, I think about the BAL, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with what they're doing. In all transparency, I've, I've heard that Africa is trying to host uh, a, a, a very solid league for years already. So eventually, it's been around 10 years that I've heard about, yeah, we got to set up something in Africa on the continent for, you know, the African countries to develop their, their league and, and be more competitive. So what the, the, BAL, the BAL, sorry, is doing, uh, to me is great because obviously it's still early uh, we're going into the third season uh, but I can already see the improvement from you know year one to year two it was a pretty good jump uh, I'm assuming from year two year three is going to be an even better jump um, better coaches better players uh, well more structured uh, you know they have the, the, the BAL combined that they, that they host obviously they have uh, guys more taking it more seriously, uh, you know, with the windows, you know, the, 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 what happened in February uh, in, in Egypt or in March, sorry, then in Senegal, and then the, the, the final, the main event in, in Kigali. So I think they're, uh, they're slowly, uh, but surely getting there. Um, I wanna hope that in the next four or five years, we should have a very, very competitive league, uh, you know, that's, that's well equipped to, to feed the NBA directly. Uh, or the, some pro teams in Europe or, or anywhere in Africa or, 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 or even the G League. But what I'm saying is, at the time, it wasn't possible to get drafted straight from Africa uh, because I don't think the NBA respected any African leagues. You had to pay your dues in, in Europe or in college. With the, the BAL platform and you know everything that goes around it, I think now we, we, we're talking. Now we're going to have a, a, a legit, real professional basketball league on the continent that's going to allow guys, uh, uh, young talent from Africa, to get drafted directly from BAL to the NBA. And that is, uh, that is amazing. My message for the African youth, all of my young African brothers, keep dreaming, keep working, it's happening. Like, it, this is no dream. This is reality. You know, Pascal Siakam is reality. Joel Embiid is reality. Gorgi Dieng is reality. You know, uh, Serge Ibaka, Bismarck Biombo, this is reality, it's happening. Keep working, use everything you can use as far as resources, you know. There's a lot of stuff going on in Africa, basketball camp held by single guys or by bigger brands, whether it's the NBA, whether it's the BAL. Use your platform, use your resources, keep dreaming, keep working. There's an opportunity for everybody. It didn't used to be like that but more and more you're going to have a chance to make it happen at the highest stage keep working keep dreaming that was francois nyam for xbow media see you soon